First of all, thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. My name is Sin Kyu Nam, Technical Engineer of Midas IT. In today's webinar, I will introduce step-by-step -step process of modeling PSC box gutter bridge using balanced cantilever method and show you guys how to do this using both manual method and bridge wizard function in Midas Civil. There are five main learning objectives today. First, I will spend about uh, probably around 20 minutes introducing some of the useful features developed in past two years, followed by the basic procedure required for modeling the segmented bridges using Midas Civil. Next is how this can be achieved in both manual method and wizard function. And I will highlight various features in Midas Civil. At last, I will also show you about how to check various results and dynamic report. So the webinar will focus on more about the flexibility and functionality of Midas Civil in conjunction with introduction of PSC box gutter bridge using FCM. First of all, Midas Civil has recently developed a number of useful features for the Australian engineers. Super T and Super I gutters are provided as data database section, which are one of the most popular section in Australia. Also, time-dependent material properties and um, crypt and shrinkage calculations can be provided as per AS5100 code, as well as uh, moving load analysis. There are a lot of other useful features such as bridge wizard function. Everything in Mother Civil can be modeled with manual method. However, wizard function is provided for the convenience of the user. Automatic generation of model including boundary condition and the construction stage is also possible considering time dependent material properties. So previous slide was about pre-stressed concrete composite wizard and still composite wizard, uh, still composite bridge wizard is also possible. So the also resultant force diagram and the table results are provided to show the result of 2D plate element in terms of 1D beam element result. Plate local axis can now be aligned with uh, reference to global axis or cylindrical axis. Also, seven degree of seven degree of freedom of beam element considering warping constant can be considered. So now both Saint Venom torsion and warping torsions can be can be simulated in Mother Civil. The analysis speed has been improved by supporting 60 64 bits over. Beam element is now capable of performing material nonlinear analysis. So not only plate element but also beam elements can be used for the analysis in which both geometric nonlinear effect and material nonlinear effect need to be taken into account. Form, form misses and Tresca stress distribution for the entire model can now be verified by verified for beam element using stress contour. Cable force optimization can be done using lack of fit force and unknown load factor in Mother Civil. And now both large displacement and creep and shrinkage can be taken into account at the same time. Also restrained deformation due to different material properties between concrete slab and steel gutter of, of the composite section can now be considered. So I have only uh, extracted a small portion from the recent development but there are many other useful features so please try to keep try, try keep update with the release note uploaded in my this user website. I quickly want to show you one of the notable application, Basar Overpass, one of the widest bridge in Europe, 46 meters wide, one and a half kilometers long. This bridge is located in Bucharest, Romania, which is highly seismic zone. And Civil was also applied for performing nonlinear dynamic analysis to examine the behavior of seismic isolator, such as lead rubber bearing isolator and viscous dampers. This is also PSC box gutter bridges uh, using 
uh, constructed using free cantilever method, which I will go through today. So now let me take you through general procedure of designing PSC box gutter bridge. First, you need to go through preliminary stage, and this stage consists of scheme design, such as getting basic information of the span or alignment of the bridge, etc. Of course, you need uh, design guides such as BS code or Euro code or Australian code, and it is very practical to have some examples or any other code of practice. The next step is that you need to create ten. Uh, you, you need to decide what sort of sections to be used or materials or boundary conditions to be used. One of the biggest modeling challenge of designing PSC bridge, PSC bridge is that there are so many different PSC gutter types, which also means that there are so many different PSC sections in practice. So Mida Civil already provides various sections from standard within our database. And various PSC sections are provided which are commonly used in practical design such as PSC 1 cell, 2 cell, PSC I, Super T section, Super I section, and so on. For more generalized section, user can create their own section using section property calculator or user can draw any sections in CAD, in AutoCAD, and import these drawing in SPC, section property calculator and then calculate its section property automatically so that user can use this section in the modeling without having to calculate all those section properties manually. This flex flexibility provides such a broad spectrum of modeling functionality of MIDAS server. Also, tapered section can be generated very easily using either linear or polynomial variation. Today we will be using tapered section, so I will show you this later on during the demonstration. Similarly, concrete, steel and SRC materials can be defined in Mother Civil. There are already various standards implemented with such a large number of database of material. Material properties can also be defined by the user and these and with this they can create a material with a zero weight density and they can use this to create sort of a weightless material for stuff like dummy beam. And also time dependent material properties of concrete and tendon can be created to take into account the effect of creep and shrinkage in concrete and pre-stress loss due to relaxation of the tendon. Again various codes are provided such as CBFIP, AS uh, 5100, ASHTO, ACI, European, etc. Once you define the input values, the time-dependent material properties can be checked in graph as well. One of the, one of the advantages of time-dependent material properties are that you can link these uh, properties to the material properties that you previously defined. Also, if you have tapered section, uh, its hypothetical thickness will be different for every single element, but the th hypothetical thickness of tapers, uh, tapered PSC section can be automatically updated by the program, so you don't have to calculate uh, manually for every single element. Once the geometry is created, you need to apply pre-stressing tendon. First, you need to define the tendon property depending on the type of structures that you have. Both internal and external tendon types are provided in Mother Civil, as well as various codes for the calculation of relaxation loss of tendon. The next, the next step is that you need to create tendon profile. Uh, there are three different methods that you can create tendons in Mother Civil. Each and every method has its own benefit. The first and the most basic uh, method is the tendon profile function. So you can create tendon profile individually by defining uh, XY or XZ uh, two-dimensional or XYZ uh, three-dimensional coordinates of the tendons. With this you can define the individual tendons at very specific locations. The second method is importing AutoCAD file. If you have tendon profile in terms of AutoCAD file, 
sometimes engineers do have tandem profile information in DXF file format. So with this, uh, this can this can be imported to Mother Civil using tandem profile generator function, so that you don't have to define the coordinate of tandem one by one. Third. And the method that I will be showing you today is tendon template feature. If tendons to be created on regular shapes are repeatedly, the arrangement of tendon can be saved as a template. And with this, um, this can be applied again on a group of elements which have similar tendon arrangement. And this will save huge amount of time for the engineers without repeating tedious procedure. Then you need to define specific construction stage of the model for accurate simulation of evolving structure configuration and elastic and time dependent uh, displacement. So the fundamental concept of construction stage analysis in Mother Silver is simply uh, activating and deactivating the group. This is the basic concept and it is applied exactly same for the load and boundary conditions as well. Moving on, the design of most pre-stressed concrete structures will be limited by the serviceability criteria. And um, there are three checks that must be carried out, decompression, uh, crack width, and stress limit. The serviceability uh, limit state check and tendon loss calculation should be performed. And um, you can check whether the number, location, and the pre-stress value of the tendons are adequate or not. And you can also review the result of tendon loss in both graph and the table format. So bear in mind, I will get back to this later on uh, in the, when I show you the demonstration. After that, you, you can apply removing load and other loads to the structure, other live loads to the structure. So moving load analysis in Mother Civil uh, can be performed in three steps. First, user can uh, select the moving load code. Then we will define the traffic lane on the structure and finish up by defining the vehicle types that they want to apply to the specific lanes. There are pretty much all type all the vehicle. There are pretty much all the vehicle types available according to the code that user specified. For example. M1600 and S1600 are provided as specified in the Australian code. And various factors can be uh, considered as well using, uh, um, as you can see, uh, various uh, dynamic load allowance and other factors can be considered. And also user defining vehicles are also provided by defining uh, various parameters for the vehicle, such as axle weight, distance between the axles, and so on. Apart from the vehicle load, uh, engineers also need to consider the thermal, if, thermal actions on the structure. Both seasonal temperature and linear or nonlinear temperature gradient can be considered. Also, if the section for which the temperature difference is to be considered is not rectangle. The width of the equivalent rectangle section can be used to calculate the temperature difference in, instead. Once the analysis is performed, various member forces and these need to be checked and this can be done in both graphical method or in table format as well. I will also show you this in demonstration. Apart from this, uh, there are other useful features for PSE box gutter bridges. A scale factor for moment of inertia about y-axis can be applied to check the section reflecting on effective width. The scale factors are then applied for stress calculation without affecting the calculations for forces and deflection. Camber results are also obtainable for segmented bridges. 2D transverse analysis model can be automatically generated from the global analysis uh, bridge model using the transverse uh, analysis. Using this transverse analysis, 
we can find the critical transverse location of the vehicle load. Also, we can check the force and stress, di stress distribution of each component on the cross section, such as top and bottom flanges or the web. So I have prepared a simple model of a curved PSC box gutter bridge using free cantilever method. So now, now I will begin how to achieve this uh, in my disable, both using both manual method and wizard function. So uh, this is the general layout of my disable once you uh, open my disable. So I know there are some, some people who are not familiar with my disable, so I will just uh, start with a brief uh, simple introduction of my disable, uh, general user interface. So as you can see on the top, there's a, there are various ribbon menus. It is very simple and straightforward. So the, simp uh, so the work procedure goes from the left, left to right. So you need to uh, define uh, and create the basic geometry first. And then you need to assign uh, various materials and section properties to the structures that you uh, created. Once you uh, created the basic geometry, you need to apply load and boundary conditions. Then you can perform various analysis to the structure. So you, once you perform the analysis, you can check the results. And then once you check the result in both graphical and table format, you can also um, uh, print out the dynamic report as well. So I will finish off uh, showing you how to utilize these features in my decibel. So first of all, uh, I have prepared a simple start file, uh, which I have already defined uh, some of the materials and section properties. So let's go to how to define materials and section properties first. So this is the material properties uh, dialog. So once you open this dialog, you can select whatever the materials that you want to define. And you can see that uh, various uh, materials are provided in terms of database. And it applies exactly the same for the sections as well. So if you go section and click add, you can see that uh, various sections are provided in terms of database. As you can see, these are already uh, provided in terms of database section. But you can all, all, always define your own sections by clicking this uh, user defining feature. And then you can just simp simply define all these uh, parameters indicated in this uh, guideline image. And also SRC section, combined section, tapered section, or composite section, they are all possible in Mother Sybil. And also, if you go to PSC sections, various PSC sections are provided in terms of database. So if you go to a um, PSC value, you can define uh, your own PSC section by uh, defining the coordinates. Or if you want to, if you have a lot of projects uh, related with a uh, super T section or super I uh, section, you can simply uh, go to database and select Australian, and you can select various uh, super T section or super I sections already implemented in Mother Civil. So basically, I have pre prepared uh, five sections uh, previously. So I have two uh, PSC uh, box uh, section, uh, both one cell, both with the same width, but one with larger opening and one with small opening. So I have used these two sections to create a tapered section, which is a larger opening at I end and small opening at J end. Exactly the same, but in opposite direction. So I have prepared two tapered sections as, as well, and as well as a box shape of uh, uh, peer sections. And um, if you have any questions in between uh, when I show you the demonstration, please uh, please uh, write it down on the question uh, dialog in our go to meeting function, and I will try to answer those questions raised uh, during the demonstration at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions, just feel free to write it anytime in the questions section. So now I have prepared a simple 
some of the basic materials and section properties for the structures that I will create today. So one of the good thing about my civil is that um, there are three menus on the on the side, so you can access all those informations about the model. So you don't have to, so you can just use this uh, walk tree menu just to simply modify the structures by just using drag and drop features. Also, I would like to tell you that uh, Midas is fully compatible with uh, Microsoft Excel. So if you have uh, some sort of uh, information such as nodal information in, in terms of uh, Microsoft Excel, so you can just copy it directly from Excel and then just simply paste it onto Midas Civil. So now you can have uh, these uh, three nodes uh, generated automatically. Sometimes uh, a lot of engineering consultancy uh, use uh, utilize Microsoft Excel uh, to generate their information. So you can use these features if you have a lot of uh, features in uh, Excel. And another thing that I want to show you is that you can, if you have your uh, gather information in terms of AutoCAD DXF file, you can import it uh, directly into Mother Civil and then you can uh, select the layers and then you can assign the materials and section properties to the layers that you will be importing into Mother Civil. So with this you can uh, generate the, your, your gutter straight away. And now I want to uh, create the tapered sections uh, onto this structure. So uh, I will select one half of the structure and then simply use a drag and drop feature to assign tapered section. And same for the other side as well. So now I have to make another modifications here. So I if need to create a smooth profile from one end all the way to the middle. So now I will use tapered group feature and then let's just name it as taper one. And then, as you can see, I have selected these elements. And then if you want a straight line uh, profile, you can simply use a linear. Or if you want sort of a curvature of the taper section, you can use a polynomial. And then by just simply clicking add, and also do exactly the same for the other side. Let's name it as taper two. Let's click add. And now you can see that uh, the girl has nice tapered sections generated very easily. So now, now I want to create a pier uh, generated from the bottom of the middle uh, uh, center of the girder. So now I will use a translate feature because I want to create a pier from from the bottom of the gutter, not from the top of the gutter. So let's just call it a 0, 0, 0, minus 5. Let's delete all this and just simply select this uh, node and then click apply. And I will create a support conditions at the each end of the gutter. So I will translate node 3 meters as well. So in Mother Civil, there are a lot of features uh, that you can create the basic uh, geometry. Now I will introduce the extrude feature. So in Mother Civil, you can extrude a line element from node, or, or planar element from line element, or solid element from planar element. So if you choose line element from node, so you can just uh, simply assign materials and section properties that you will create, and then. 20 meters and select the node that you just uh, translated. If you so, if you click apply, now you can see the pier has been generated, extruded from the bottom of the section from this node. There are one more thing that you have to do. Uh, if you want to uh, assign a fixed condition, go to boundary and define support and click all this uh, restraint and then select the node at the bottom of the pier and then simply click apply.
to assign uh, fixed conditions. And if I want to assign another support conditions at both ends and releasing dx and dy, and just simply click apply. So now you have to sort of um, connect this support and the peer with the gutter that you have. With this, uh, in order to do this, you can sort of use this link function. So I can use last link rigid type and just select these two nodes to connect these uh, together. So now the now uh, all these support and the peers are rigidly connected to the structure. So uh, I have created a basic geometry of the structure in very short period of time. Now I want to show you how to uh, uh, consider the time dependent material effect. In order to do that, go to properties, time dependent material properties and click uh, creep and shrinkage. And as you can see, uh, you, uh, various codes are provided. So if you if you are using CBFIP, you can use this, or if you can, if you're using Australian, you can simply uh, use this feature. And then you can check the creep and shrinkage results in graph format as well. And also, you can create your own uh, time-dependent material properties by uh, creating a uh, user-defined time-dependent material properties uh, by defining these values in Excel table format. Exactly same for the composite uh, compressive strengths as well. So if you're using uh, Australian code, you can just simply use that, and then you just have to define mean compressive uh, strength at uh, 28 days. So click OK. So once you created these uh, time-dependent material properties, you have to sort of uh, link these time-dependent material properties that you just defined with the previous uh, just, just normal concrete properties that you defined at the beginning. So if you uh, click all this and then click add, you will be able to uh, the program will automatically uh, link these time-dependent material properties to the concrete properties that you have. And also, as I mentioned, the hypothetical uh, thickness of each element will be different because uh, each element will have uh, different parameters because, as, as you can see, uh, as, as the section goes to, towards the middle, uh, the parameters go, becomes uh, bigger. So the U value will be different. So you can either input this uh, hypothetical thickness by manually by choosing this input feature, or you can uh, simply uh, calculate this automatically by selecting this code and uh, the formula. So you just have to uh, click select all the element and then just simply click up, apply. Then you can check that the hypothetical thickness of the structure is calculated automatically for every single element. So I have assigned uh, time-dependent material properties as well. So now I will show you how to create the tendons to the structure. So go to load and then pre-stress tab. And then the first thing that you have to do is, of course, you need to define the tendon property. So I have defined this previously. So pretty much all type of tendons are provided. So either internal or external pretension or post-tension, they're all uh, provided by, by the civil. And then you just have to select the material properties and then define uh, the number of strands that in order to calculate the, to the total, tendon total tendon area. And also you can define the dock diameter as well. And also uh, there are functions that you can either include this uh, in terms of calculation of section properties so, because if you take it into account about the dock diameter, the section properties will be different. So you can either consider this or not. And also, uh, if you want to consider the relaxation loss of the tendon, you can uh, simply uh, uh, select this feature. And then you can create your own uh, relaxation uh, coefficients by using user-defining user features. So I have uh, created an uh, Australian version and then simply just use this. And you just have to define all these 
features for the tendons. And I will introduce, uh, briefly go through again about the tendon profile uh, generating features in MyDecibel. So the most basic method will be the tendon profile. So you can either define either XY or XZ two-dimensional coordinates or three-dimensional coordinates of the tendons. And if you go to tools and tendon profile generator, you can see that uh, you can import the AutoCAD uh, profile or tendon profile, AutoCAD uh, tendon profile into uh, this feature. So you can use that uh, tendon profile generated in AutoCAD file uh, directly to my server. Also, the method that I want to show you today is a tendon template. So if you go to uh, structure and PSC bridge and tendon template, this dialog comes up. So you just have to uh, select the other element that you, you want to assign the tendon profile. So if you click add, you, you can see that uh, general tendon profile in terms of uh, both plan view xy and elevation view xc as well so if you want to create sort of a curve tendons you can uh, in terms of uh, plan view and the elevation view you can select either curved or you can uh, also choose straight line and if you have some sort of anchorage at the at the end you can sort of use this feature by de defining these values and the guideline image is also provided. And also the good thing about tendon template is that uh, you can save, you can create your own tendon arrangement at the beginning and then you can save that arrangement as a template. So the real benefit of this feature is that uh, if you have uh, some sort of a uh, composite gutter bridges uh, where you have a lot of uh, gutter going in, which have the sa same section, um, same section uh, geometry, you have uh, exactly same tendon profile uh, or tendon arrangement. So you can uh, use that tendon template for all the girders, so you don't have to create one by one again and, and again. So I can uh, just create one tendon t arrangement and then save it as a tendon template. So click open. And as you can see, uh, tendon arrangement has been uh, generated uh, automatically uh, to all this section. And also it is very easy to uh, manipulate around within this feature. So if you click this uh, uh, section 18, element 18, so you can see that the tendon ar ar arrangement at this uh, element. So if you don't like this, you can just simply delete it. And if you want to sort of uh, utilize this and then you can sort of move it and copy as well. So you can see that tendon is generated here. Also, so once you def define this, uh, you can just simply click OK. And now you can see that the tendon profile can be checked individually and all at the same time as well. So once you define these uh, uh, tendon profile, uh, you can uh, you have to pre-stress it. So you can either select individual tendon, or you can select a group of tendons at the same time, and then you can apply uh, the pre-stress in terms of uh, stress or force values. And also the sequential pre-stressing is possible. So the this is how we uh, how we can do our balanced cantilever method and uh, how we can simulate a balanced cantilever method or of segmented bridges in Madasevo. The last thing that I want to show you from the manual method is the construction stage analysis. So as I mentioned, the construction stage analysis is all about generating, activating, and deactivating the group. So I will just quickly create a structure group one to ten. And click OK, add, close this. So I will assign these elements as a structure group one, and then structure group two, because I will be activating this 
uh, groups uh, at different stages as well. For example, I will activate structure group 4 at uh, construction stage 4. Let me just do this uh, one more. Right. And I'm just showing you this uh, just to give you the basic idea about the construction stage analysis in MyDecible. So you go to construction stage and select define construction stage or you can just simply use, uh, use this uh, shortcut. So I will generate uh, 10 construction stages as well. One, two, ten. And click OK. So if you go to construction stage one, now you can see the element tab and boundary tab and load tab. Because you, we have defined the structure group tab, you can a activate structure group one at construction stage one. And click apply. Exactly the same for the construction stage two. And so basically this goes all the way to the end where you have all the other elements activated. So um, let me just do one more to show you. And click OK. I think that's enough. And close. And now you can see that our construction stage has been uh, generated in here. So if you click uh, construction stage 1, the structure group uh, 1 is uh, gen created. And if you go to construction stage 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6, so this goes all the way to the end. So this is the basic philosophy about construction stage analysis in Mother Civil. And it also applies exactly the same for the load and boundary conditions as well. So this is how we can perform our construction stage analysis in Mother Civil very sim in very simple method. So I'll so this is about uh, the manual method, and I will show you about uh, how to uh, do this with wizard function. So I have prepared uh, pretty much the same uh, uh, start file. So this is pretty much exactly the same uh, start file that I have previously when I show you the manual method. So if you want to use a wizard function, go to structure tab and then select FCM free cantilever method. It is exactly the same for the balanced cantilever method as well. So within the wizard, you can see type 1 and type 2. So type 1 is, is that, that you will be using the form that is provided by the user for the section and tendons. But if you select type 2, you can use your own type of section and also you can create your own tendon arrangement without following the form that is provided by the by the civil. So if I, I and I will show you how to do with our uh, type one for today. So the good thing about this uh, wizard file is that you can also save this as a template or wizard file. We call it wizard file. So you can just uh, save it first previously and then you can just uh, bring it anytime if you have a similar project or same project. So there are three major tabs in uh, FCM Bridge Wizard, Model tab, Section tab, and Tendon tab. So in Model tab, is all about generating the basic geometry of the structure. As you can see here, uh, material properties of the girder can be defined here, and then materials and section properties for the substructures can be defined. And also the number of uh, peers and the method of uh, construction and also if you have a, some sort of curvature you can define the radius of the curvature and also you can define the geometry of peer table key segments and peer and FSM and all these each segments as well so it def define the basic geometry within um, within model tab and go to section tab to create the girder section so if you want to uh, create one cell or two cell or multiple cells using our type 2, so you just have to follow this guideline image and input all these features. And you can check, once you define all these features, you can check this uh, by drawing view option. And also uh, form travelers in Mother Civil 
in F FCM wizard can be considered in terms of load. So you can define the weight, uh, the the force, the P, and then you can define the eccentricity to calculate the moment uh, generated using a tra form traveler. And also, if you go to tendon, all these uh, you just have to follow this guideline image to create uh, the tendon arrangement. And also, you can define the different tendon properties for the top of the section and bottom of the section. And then you can either uh, apply pre-stress using this feature if you want to def uh, apply maybe 70% uh, of ultimate tensile strength, you can use this, or 70% of uh, yield strength, you can simply use that. And you can change all these values as well. And anchorage can be considered as well in this wizard format. So once you define all these parameters, you just have to simply click OK to create the model uh, automatically considering the time-dependent material properties effect and the construction stages. So, as you can see, uh, I have uh, generated this model automatically. So, if I go uh, to construction stage one, you can see that, and then you can see this number of elements, node and element, and you can see the tendon profile generated at this stage. So, if you go to construction stage two, more number of tendons is uh, activated. Same for the node and element as well. And also, you can check the form travelers acting at different locations. So if you go all the way to this, so you can uh, check the effect of uh, form travelers at different stages as well. So let's just uh, on display this. So now I want to show you how to assign moving load onto the structure. So you go to load and uh, select moving load. And if you click uh, Australia, and you can uh, define traffic line lane on if you have a beam element. But if you have a, some sort of a plate element, or if, when you're designing a P PS, uh, PC composite uh, gutter bridges, you can have, sometimes you can have a, a slab as a plate element, so you can use this feature surface lane as well. So now I have a, a line element, so I will use a traffic line lanes and go to add. Let's define it as lane one. And let's change it to meters. And let's do this again. Lane one. And I will create two traffic lanes, one from uh, minus four meters eccentricity from the center line, I mean the reference line of this beam element, and then one on the exactly opposite side. So if you have a, if you have your gutter in straight line, you can simply use this uh, two-point feature by selecting this uh, begin and the end point of the gutter. If you have a straight line uh, layer of the gutter, you can use this. Or if you want to uh, create a traffic lane on the curved gutter layout, you can just simply uh, use this uh, feature called number. So you just have to select this element, which is 1 to 64. I'll just copy this and just simply paste it onto here. And then click Add, and then click Apply. So now you can see that So traffic lane has been created minus 4 eccentricity from this uh, center line. So I will do exactly the same for the opposite direction as well. And then just delete this, and click Add, and click OK. So now you can see that the two traffic lane has been generated from uh, on this uh, gutter element. So once you generated this, um, once you generated this uh, traffic lane, you can create uh, the vehicle load. So if you want to use uh, your vehicle load from the stat, uh, the standard that you uh, define the code as an Australian, so you can choose a AS5100, so road traffic, and then you can define whatever the uh, vehicles that 
to be to be applied to the structure. So you can either use M six one zero zero or S one six zero zero. And all these uh, features are automatically provided by the uh, by the program. And also you can define the dynamic load allowances as well. And also if you want to create your own uh, vehicles using a user define uh, feature, you can just go click add this one and then you can define your own uh, vehicle features, vehicles in terms of uh, user device user defining features provided by Mother Civil. So let me just uh, quickly simply use this uh, M61 and close. So once you define the vehicles as well, you need to create the moving load case. So with this, you will assign the vehicles that you created onto the specific lanes that you have within the structure. So go to lane, uh, go to add, and then you can specify what sort of lanes to be, to be applied with the uh, vehicle that you created. So you can create moving load case, uh, whatever you want. And then you can also uh, define the scale factors for the uh, number of loaded rain, lanes as well. So this is about uh, how assigning the moving load to the structure. If you need to consider the temperature effect as well, you can uh, consider the seasonal temperature by using system temperature. So let's just change this to uh, Fahrenheit into Celsius. So if you want to consider the contraction and expansion, you can just define the initial temperature and the final temperature. So seasonal temperature can be considered very uh, easily in Mother Civil. And if you want to consider the either linear or nonlinear beam, uh, nonlinear temperature gradient within the beam, you can use this beam section temperature feature. And then you are using PSC section, so you uh, click this. So you, you just have to basically uh, define the reference position to be either top or from the bottom. So once you uh, select the reference position from the top, and then you can define the location of temperature gradient uh, by uh, defining these H values, and also the temperature values, corresponding temperature values at these locations. So it is very easy to consider either linear or nonlinear temperature effect in Mother Civil as well. So once you define all these uh, uh, geometry, time-dependent material properties and all those loadings, that, then you can perform uh, very various analysis. So I have prepared a completed model file of this exactly the same model. And I want to show you how to check these uh, various results. So various results can be obtained in Mother Civil in terms of uh, different construction stages as well. So if you want to check the deformations, you can uh, check the deformations of the structure at different construction stages uh, with these effects as well. So this can be shown in uh, Mother Civil. And also if you want to consider the beam element, go to force and select beam diagram. And if you want to see the effect of uh, dead load at construction stage eight, uh, bending moment, you can select this. And then let's turn off deformed effect. And then you can uh, check all these uh, Bending moment results are due to the dead load at different construction stages. You can uh, obtain all these values as well in graphical format. And also, if you want to consider the tendon primary effect, you can select these at different construction stages as well. And also, if you want to review all these uh, member forces results in table format, you can just simply use this feature, this function this button and click if you want to see the effect of dead load 
at construction stage 12. And if you click OK, you can see that all these member forces such as axial force, shear force, and torsion and bending moment can be obtained in a table format. So a lot of engineers, a lot of engineers in uh, pretty much all engineering consultancy, they have their own spreadsheet. So you can use all, all these uh, features to obtain all those uh, member forces, all those uh, results in numerical results in table format, and then just simply copy this from directly from Mother Civil onto the Microsoft Word Excel uh, spreadsheet that you have. And also, I would like to show you uh, how to check the moving load results as well. So, um, what you need to think is that um, what would you do to uh, locate the different position of the vehicle once you perform the moving load analysis. So the basic uh, procedure and the uh, moving load analysis in Mida Civil is uh, they calculate the influence line automatically and they position the vehicle at the most critical position. So the engineers don't have to um, sort of position the vehicle at different location of the vehicle. Uh, of the structure. So in Mother Civil, um, as you can see, uh, you can just select the moving load case and then you just have to specify whatever the element and then if you want to see the effect of uh, maximum effect of bending moment, you just have to select these components and then click apply. And let's turn on the legend and let's turn off the load values. So as you can see, um, let's just do this. As you can see, the influence line is automatically obtained in Mother Civil, and uh, position, uh, the position the vehicle is the vehicle is positioned at the most critical position within the structure. So engineers don't have to locate the vehicles at different uh, different locations. So you can check these uh, results and maximum effect as well. So the maximum bending moment result at uh, key for the key element 27 is you can see 20 uh, 20,000. And then if you want to review the shear force as well. So the maximum shear force for key element 27 is 616. So all these are uh, can be also obtained in a beam diagram as well. So if I go to a key element 27 and effect of a moving load, and then if I click OK, you can see that the maximum bending moment is 20,000, which is exactly the same as the value that I showed you just now. And maximum shear force is 600, 616. But you need to think um, the vet, what forces that you have to use for the uh, design. So you don't simply use these um, values for the design because these forces does not occur simultaneously. One of the good thing and uh, the feature that a lot of our engineers really like about moving load analysis in Mother Civil is uh, you can obtain concurrent forces. So if you go to view by max value item, and then you can select uh, bending moment and shear force and um, the load case. So when shear force is maximum, which was 616, you can see the corresponding member forces acting at the same time. And if you select when bending moment is maximum, which was 20,000, you can see that the corresponding member forces at the same time as well. So, uh, so this is the moving load analysis in Mother Civil, and also you can also obtain the tendon loss uh, results. So go to result table, select tendon and tendon loss, 
and then you can select the uh, effect of individual tendon and different construction stages as well. So if I click apply, you can obtain this uh, stress uh, results, uh, pre-stress uh, loss results, both for the short term, such as immediate loss, and long-term loss such as uh, creep and shrinkage loss and relaxation loss as well. And all these values can be obtained in graph format as well. So you can just simply uh, select whatever the tendon and different construction stages as well. And you can get these in graphical format as well. And also you can obtain the camber results in uh, MyDeCivil. So you just, you can, if you want to see the table format of the camber result, you can select this. And let's ch change it to millimeter. So in order to make zero displacement at the last construction stage for every single node, you can uh, uh, perform a uh, camber, camber control and then you can obtain these camber results as well. And these camber results can be reviewed in graphical format as well. So camber is also provided in Mother Civil as well. So this is all about uh, the what I want to show you for today uh, in terms of uh, results. So I quickly want to finish off with uh, by showing you the dynamic report feature of Mother Civil. Let me just open another file, which is exactly the same uh, structure. So the every single um, images in Mother Civil, such as this uh, layout, you can save this as a dynamic report image. So if you have your own uh, format of uh, report, you can use your format, or you can uh, create your uh, report from um, Mother Civil because uh, Microsoft Word, Act, Word is uh, fully compatible with other civil. So I have saved some of the image files previously. So you just have, you just can use a simple drag and drop feature to uh, put these image files into uh, your report. And also you can uh, put down all these uh, member forces results and also you can also import these uh, section informations as well. So it is very easy and convenient for the engineers to uh, obtain these sort of results, uh, sort of report. But sometimes engineers have to make a lot of uh, changes and modifications to the model. So this is a bit extreme, but I will just show you uh, just basic idea. So if you make any sort of changes to the model, maybe if you have to change a small part of the sections within the model, that change can cause um, a significant uh, difference in terms of the result. But this can be uh, very tedious for the engineers sometimes because they have to perform, uh, rerun the analysis again and then get all those results and then check all those results and then obtain and maybe screen capture all those results and put it put it back into the report. So this can be very tedious for the engineers sometimes. But in Mother Civil, there's a very useful features to uh, in order to um, save huge amount of time on this procedure. And so this is called dynamic report auto regeneration. So you just have to change the model file. Uh, once you make the modifications, then you just have to, then you just have to re-perform the analysis again. So in order to calculate all those member member forces results. So once you once you perform the analysis again with the modified model, you just have to go to the report and then click this dynamic report auto regeneration and then you can see all these image files and uh, table that I have imported into this uh, report and you just have to simply 
click this regenerate feature and then program will automatically update all those uh, changes or changes in terms of uh, sections or results within the structures that you that you created so this is it for the uh, today's webinar so thank you for listening so if you have any questions from now uh, please uh, let me know I'll try to answer So, uh, uh, Mr. Lee has asked one question about the tendon profile generator in uh, uh, using AutoCAD uh, DXF file format. So, if you have your uh, tendon profile in terms of a straight line or arc or spline, it doesn't matter. Any any profile of tendon can be uh, imported into my civil using. Uh, tendon uh, profile generator. Uh, I want to show you, but I don't have a DXF file uh, at the moment. I can uh, show you uh, if you want to know more about the tendon profile features related with uh, uh, AutoCAD file uh, compatibility. I can uh, email you about the detailed information. And of course. This uh, presentation file and this presentation file can be um, can be sent to you if you want to have it as a, some sort of a reference. And if you want the if you want the webinar information, uh, webinar file in terms of video file, I can send you those materials as well. So if you have any questions, um, please, uh, f if you have any sort of a technical questions, feel free to ask me uh, via this email address or Edward Kim, uh, the regional manager. So I don't think there are uh, more questions. Uh, so thank you for joining our webinar today. and. Uh, Thank you very much for listening.